Hi, I'm Rob. I'm the CTO of Adventure Box, and today we're taking a look at uh, the basics of creating games using the Adventure Box engine. So, this is the top of the site, which you'll find right now at adventurebox.com. And you can see from the top, we can either choose to play a game already created by another player or to make a game, and that's what we're looking for. Now, the first step in making a game is to create your game world. So, uh, in the beginning, you've got options to either generate a flat land, which is a simple flat area, or generate a terrain. Terrains are rolling fields, trees, hills, lakes, seas, things like that. To get started with taking a look at the tools, we're just going to create a simple flatland, small and grassy, and off we go. So here we are in our shiny new world, we've been directed straight into the game making tools. As you can see, our world is very flat and it's pretty small and it's grassy. Now the first thing we should take a look at is the interface on the tools. So uh, you can see at the top left of the screen you've got your current level, your uh, gold balance and your gems. You need gold and gems in order to buy content to add to your world. Uh, on the right you can see that we've got your uh, account menu that gives you access to options, profile, things like that. At the bottom right we have a set of um, maker controls and these we can use to edit the properties of the world to take snapshots to turn on and off the sound and go full screen things like that. We also have a little readout here that's showing us the details of whatever the mouse is currently pointing at and showing us the kinds of interactions that are currently available to us. At the top in the center you can see we've got uh, a sign saying entry portal now this little green sign here, this is where players will enter your world. And we can move this to anywhere we want later on. But what's important for the moment is that you can see that entry portal sign on the compass at the top of the screen. So wherever you are in your world, you can use the compass to navigate so that you don't get lost while you're creating your world. Also at the bottom left, we've got um, some details about the world experience bonus. Now. Uh, the more content that you add to your world, the more stories and characters and creatures and gameplay that you add to your world, the higher this experience bonus number will be. And whenever players come on Adventure Box and they play your games, you'll earn uh, gold and experience and gems um, based on how much time players spend in your world. And the higher your experience bonus, the more rewards you'll earn. So the more work you put into your worlds in your games, the more you'll earn from them. Now, uh, at any point, we can right-click on the terrain in order to see the different kinds of content that we can add to our game worlds. We can also right-click on the sky in order to see uh, weather and post effects and time settings so we can, uh, you know, adjust the mood and the feel inside of our game worlds. If we take a look at our content piles, we right click anywhere on the terrain. The very first, going in anti-clockwise order, we've got uh, setting the world entry portal. So we can use this to move the portal around and modify where players enter our game. Next up we've got blocks. So uh, we click on the blocks option and we open the maker palette on the left. You can see we've got a set of tabs and these are showing us the different kinds of content that we've currently got available to add to worlds. So uh, when it comes to blocks we can either mine blocks from our worlds uh, directly uh, or we can buy blocks in the block shop and in fact we can buy any type of content by opening up the associated palette and then clicking on the button to open the, the shop. So for blocks you can see we can buy them in stacks of 100 for some gold or we can buy them in much larger stacks for just one uh, gem. Uh, the way that we work with blocks is we choose the block that we want to place and then we can place as many blocks as we like at a time. 
So it's very efficient. It's optimized for building larger structures, really. And then we can right click to get rid of whatever block is in our hand and we can drag to remove blocks. And it's very simple. We also have a little eyedropper tool so that we can pick a block from the world and build using that. Uh, okay, now after blocks, we've got uh, architecture. These are structures. So you can build anything block by block. It just uh, takes a little while, it takes a little, a little effort. If you like to do things a little bit faster, you can also buy pre-created structures. These are created by the Adventure Box team at the moment. Uh, and we can jump in and we can buy some of those. Let's give me a house, for example. Maybe a couple of trees. Why not? And we have a couple of hills. Okay. And once we've bought our structures, we can click on them. We can use the H key to rotate. Get them as we would like. And then place into the world. Uh, lots of structures, like houses, will come with lighting already on them. But you can turn those lights on or off and you can remove them if you don't want them. You can see more simple structures like hills and trees we can also add they're very quick they're very simple if we hold down the shift key we can place multiple copies of a, of an entity of a, of a model uh, and that's structures now moving along we've got items there are lots of different types of items that you can add to your world items are smaller objects like uh, furniture or lanterns or beds or uh, signposts that you can add into your world in order to give your world more detail. Also, lots of items are interactive in one way or another. You can see we've got a breakdown of the kinds of items that are available over here. We've got containers, you can place uh, uh, objects inside of them. Uh, doors, you can use to open and close and lock off different parts of your areas, of your game world, so the players have to solve puzzles or defeat enemies in order to unlock uh, parts of your world. We've got light sources so that you can set up the lighting in your world. We've got quest items. Quest items are things that players pick up while exploring your world in order to unlock different areas, in order to proceed with stories. We've got signs which are useful to communicate with players, giving them directions, telling them where to go, what's open and closed, things like that. We've got steps that are a faster way for players to move up uh, diagonal surfaces. We've got switches, which are uh, buttons, things like that, that you can uh, uh, connect to different items so that uh, you create um, uh, interactivity in your world, like you press the button and then the door opens. Uh, then we can finally got windows, which are just a simple kind of version of doors. Uh, we can buy some of those things just to take a look at what they're like. Uh, why not one of those? Okay, I'll give you a sign. Okay, so you can see we've got in our palette now the items that we've already bought uh, and we can then add them into our world. Again, H to rotate and left click to drop the object. And that's it. Your games save automatically as you go. You don't need to worry about saving. We can add a little crate uh, and you can see uh, Echo. We've got uh, reward chests. This is just another type of of container but that one automatically contains some rewards for the player here we got a, a lantern so we can add that and it'll update our lighting uh, here we've got a button why not and uh, and a statue so using items we can add lots and lots of details uh, to worlds over time Next up, we've got uh, shops. So let's go to shops. Uh, shops are a way for game makers to make some money, some gold. The way it works is that you buy a shop, for example, a shield shop, and you add it into your world right there. And now when players enter your world, they can come to the shop and they can buy and sell items with the shopkeeper. Uh, your shopkeeper then will hold on to money for you. So when you come back and visit your world again you'll pick up uh, money from your shopkeepers all your shopkeepers will gather money from players there's a minimum amount of money that your shops will give you every day so if you check into your worlds every day you'll be sure to pick up some gold from every shop 
but there's also a maximum amount that uh, that shopkeepers will hold for you so if you don't come back for a few days they'll build up to the maximum amount and they won't save any more than that for you there are a variety of different types of shops that you can add all offering different types of content to um, to players next up we've got audio now we can uh, we've got a 3d audio system inside of our engine so that you can place audio at different locations in the world and as players approach those locations they'll uh, they'll get the audio coming in one of the other earphones and they'll be mixed automatically so we've got effects let's open up here effects are things like one-off sounds you know a thunder roll or a death bell or a cricket sound or some chimes or something like that to add a little atmosphere to your world and then we've got in fact atmospheres atmospheres are playing all the time in the background things like wind or the sound of conversation or the sound of uh, some magic or caverns or water or lava or something like that and then we've got music made by our awesome uh, uh, sound designer in Stockholm uh, and we've got lots of different musical tracks and we're adding new ones all the time so that you can add them to your world in order to create really rich uh, um, atmospheric kind of feel why don't we grab uh, some music right here maybe one of these guys one of these guys we've got some atmosphere Okay, the stormy is good, and then we can do uh, wolf found is nice. Okay, and then we just drop these the same as any any item. Uh, and these models won't be visible to players, but they can hear the sounds when they enter your world. Maybe we add a little uh, music in there too. Turn that down, and we can right-click on any item in order to see the various configuration options at any time. Let me turn the music up a little, turn the wind down a little. Okay. Uh, and that's audio. We can build up a, a rich audio environment just by placing these objects into our world to different locations. Uh, next up, we've got creatures. Now, creatures we can design. Uh, uh, right inside the tools and then place them into our world so I hit the design a creature button and we head into our creature design here you can see we've got access to a variety of different types of body parts for each creature type and at the moment at level two we've got access to two different types of creatures humans and goblins goblins are automatically hostile and humans are automatically friendly though we can change that uh, both types of creature uh, have different uh, clothing, they've got different weapons and shields. Uh, as you go uh, up level by level, you unlock more and more of these types of items for both your player and for creatures that you create and add to your worlds. That's not that pretty, but that's going to be fine. Okay, and maybe give them a pair of pants. Uh, also, for humans, we've got masks. And these are just uh, uh, large masks that you can add to your creatures, to your human creatures' um, heads, in order to give them a little more variety and make them a little more different. We'll make ourselves a little clown. Why not? And we save our creature. Okay. Uh, once our creature is created, it's added to our list of, of um, uh, creatures in our palette here. And then we can uh, drop our guy into our world, and there he is. Uh, you can explore the various different types of content, different options available for uh, creatures, but that's the simple process of getting started with just adding a creature to your world. Uh, this guy has got a little red face over his head. That means he's going to be hostile to players, so he'll attack players as soon as he sees them. But we can change that behavior just by right clicking and choosing different configuration options on our creatures uh, now next up we've got portals portals are very simple we can connect worlds in adventure box with each other so I buy a portal and I drop it into my world and here I have the option to to search to find another world to connect this to so we search, we connect, now we can choose different locations in the target world. I'll choose the entry point, and there we go. 
our portal is now set up and connected to the target world so that when players approach that portal they can choose to jump through it and arrive in the other world that way we can create networks of worlds inside of the adventure box engine uh, and finally then we've got flags these are very simple we can just drop a flag into our world to define a location this one is downtown okay and we'll drop one more uh why not over here and we'll call this one uptown okay uh when a player first reaches a location um denoted by a flag then they get a little fanfare and from then on they're able to return to that point directly whenever they enter your world so if i refresh the page and re-enter the world you can see i can go directly to known locations to me though uh, as a maker i automatically know all the locations in my world but as a player you need to first discover them so we've created ourselves a uh, very basic little world with an example of each of the types of content available so the final uh, steps in this really basic introduction is just to publish our world so that it's available on the front page of adventurebox.com for other players to to give it a try the first thing we want to do before we publish is make sure that we have a title and a snapshot on our world. We can create snapshots at any time, just line up the camera somewhere that looks good for you and hit the snapshot button down here at the bottom right. This takes a moment, the system saves it and here it is. You can click on that and you can see there's our snapshot and we can set as game thumbnail right there. That opens the game properties. We can also open the game properties over here at any time. We can also open the uh, set of all snapshots, our snapshot album, clicking down here at any time. So we open up our game properties. You can see it's highlighted in red here, the name and description, because we need to give a name and description to our game. Okay, and we can save changes. And once that much is done, we're ready to publish our game. You can see all the checkboxes are ticked, everything is under control, and we can hit the publish button. Once that's done, our game is available on the front page of adventurebox.com for other players to check it out. And if we now jump back to the top of the site, we should find our game in the recently published list. And here it is, our little test game, ready for other players to give it a try. So next time we'll take a look at some of the more advanced uh, uh, functions available in the tools, things like story creation, dialogue, character and events and triggers that you can use to really add narrative into your games. See you next time. <laughs>